speak the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Flow through my blood now. Come on, the blood of Jesus. Break these things. The blood of Jesus. Wake up. The blood of Jesus. Cause me to come alive. And everyone and everything that's attached to me. Come alive. Come on. My son. Come alive. Come on. My daughter. Come alive. Come back home. Come back home. I speak. I put a demand on it. Come back home to those grandbabies. Come back home to that husband. Come back home. Holy Ghost. Stir up. Holy Ghost. Trouble the mind. Holy Ghost. Visit, visit. Holy Ghost. Move in the midst. Holy Ghost. Send your word. Holy Ghost. Have your way. And fill us. Fill us. We need a healing. Holy Ghost. Move on us. Move on us. Come on. Come on. Come on. I need your Holy Ghost. Come on. I need your Holy Ghost. What I need, I need now. What I need is going to carry me. What I need is going to lift me. What I need is going to help me. What I need is going to help me to stand, stand strong in the power, in the might of God, in the name of Jesus. I might be it, but I won't break. I might bow, but I won't break. Holy Ghost constrains me. The Holy Ghost, He got me. The Holy Ghost, talk to me. The Holy Ghost, keep me. The Holy Ghost, stir me up. Jesus, I thank you, God. New level, new height, new horizon. Because the Holy Ghost will help us. We got to go together. We got to go together. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, come on, come on, come on. Get up, get up, get up. Come on, come on. Pray for your neighbor. Come on. Pray for your neighbor. Come on. Come on, pray for your neighbor. Come on, come on, pray. That's it, that's it, come on. Pray for your neighbor, come on, speak life. Come on, speak life. Come on, speak life. Come on, speak life. Tell them God's gonna take them somewhere. Tell them God is gonna be with them. Tell them God's gonna use them. Tell them how God's gonna protect them. Tell them how God's gonna bless them. Speak favor, speak favor. Come on, speak favor, speak favor. Tell them it's gonna be all right. Tell them God's gonna restore. God's gonna renew. God will fix it. I believe, I believe. Come on. I believe, I believe. God will change it. God will help it. God will move it. He's able. Come on. Tell him he's able to do exceeding abundantly more than we can ask or think. I believe, I believe. Come on. Tell him God will do it. God will change it. The Holy Ghost will help us. That's it. That's it. Hey. Yes, God, feel God. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Stir us up, God. Hey, stir us up, God. Feel with the Holy Ghost. What do you need? God is able to supply every last one of your needs. What do you need? God to get you in position. Come on. That's it. Hey. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh. Jesus. That's it, that's it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, speak the light. Yeah. So God, we thank you for the shift. God, we thank you for the shift. God, we thank you for the move. Yes. God, we thank you how you're moving things out of the way. 
Right now, God, we're casting our cares beside you. Anything that was not like you, God, we're asking to be removed from us even right now so that when we praise you, Lord, they will go and reach you, God. When we praise you, Lord, you will sit and rest, God. We're trying to get to where you're at, Father. We're trying to be with where you're at, God. We're trying to catch up to where you're at, God. Some of us need to be touched. Some of us need to be shaken. Some of us need to be renewed. So, God, we're praising right now. We give it to you. We can't handle it. So we give it to you. We can't fix it. So we give it to you. You can fix it. You can put it in order. You can line it up. So, God, we give it back to you. God, it's yours. We don't want it. God, it's yours. We don't need it. God, it's yours. In the name of Jesus. Hey. God, we give it to you. 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 I don't care what the people say. God, we give it to you. I don't care what the report said. God, we give it to you. I don't care how I feel. God, I give it to you. Oh, God, we give it to you. Oh, God, we give it to you. You can have it. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. So, God, we cast it even right now. We're creating an altar right now to put it on right now now for you to come down God and burn it up and burn it up and make it holy and sanctify it in the name of Jesus oh God I won't let what's in my mind keep me from praising you oh God I won't let what's on my heart keep me from praising you oh God I won't let what happened to me this week keep me from praising you oh God I won't let my curtain situation keep me from praising you you deserve our glory you deserve our honor you deserve our praise oh holy is your name oh king of kings oh lord of lords oh holy be to your name oh king of kings and lord of lords alpha and omega beginning and the end first and the last oh god you are emmanuel oh king of kings prince of peace yeah 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 So God, on today, you be glorified. God, on today, you be magnified. God, on today, you be exalted. God, on today, as we become together and give you praise on today, inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, inhabit the praises of your people. Oh, God, inhabit the praises of your people. And come down and be with us on today. We make room for you to move. We make a space for you to occupy. Oh, God, sit on the altar of our hearts. Sit on the altar of our hearts and rest and God sanctify us God clean us God make us new God wash us up in the name of Jesus even if we messed up yesterday even if we messed up coming to the church God sanctify us right now that we may be able to praise you with no guilt we be able to raise our hands with no guilt we be able to give you glory with no worries even right now oh God oh God oh God oh God oh God oh God we need you we need you like never before we need you every minute and every hour. Oh God, we need you. Oh God, we need you. Oh God, we need you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're speaking right now that you be magnified. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We know every word will cover you. Every song is meant for today to give you glory, to give you praise. And the word that comes for us today will penetrate our hearts and it will give us good ground. Oh God, it will get in good ground and it will take root in our hearts that we may be able to do what you equip for us to do. So God, we give you space. God, we give you access. God, we give you authority on oh, today. Shift in this service. 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 Oh God, we need a move. We need a move on today. Oh God, we need a move. We need a move on today. Somebody got to be healed. Somebody's got to get saved. Somebody's got to be loose. Oh God, we need a move from you today. We're speaking in even right now. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. If I can't say nothing else, I say thank you. If I can't say nothing else, I say hallelujah. He cut up all your dust, so call your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, God, 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 yes, God. I promise you'll feel a whole lot better if you just put your hands in the air and say, God, 
such a great, if you could just say hallelujah, if you could just say glory be to your name, I promise you'll feel a little better if you just move. If all you can do is wiggle your toes, then do something. But I promise the more that you move on faith, the more God will good move on your behalf. I speak it right now. Thank you, 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 Lord. We thank you. God, we magnify you. And we give you all the praise and glory on today. God, as we continue throughout the service, may your name be glorified and edified on today, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And God, we ask you to seal every prayer that will sit back up to you. God, put your stamp of approval upon it and decree it to be so. In the name of Jesus, we ask all these things. And the church of God say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. To God be all the glory, yes, God, for his faithfulness unto us. Thank you, Lord God. This morning's scripture reading will be cited from Acts, the second chapter, the first through the fourth verses. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all on one accord and in one place. And suddenly, my God, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance hallelujah lord god we thank god for the reading of his word on today we thank god for the hearers the doers but most of all the obeyers of his most holy word
make room for you. We make room for you to move. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We make room for you to move. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We make room for you to move. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We make room for you to move. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit.
God, your glory, glory, glory. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. 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 N
Nobody greater. We're greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. 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 greater than our God. We our say God. great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. The great Jehovah. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. We're greater than our God. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. Greater than our God. We're greater than our God. 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 Take the praise. Take the praise. Take the praise. 
Are you worthy? Are you worthy? I can't stop praising. 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 church on today. I am not here to formally welcome you, but we are going to have a welcome uh, digitally. Amen. So to pay attention to the monitor. Welcome to One Purpose. Three churches in covenant fellowship united as one to pray, praise, worship, build, and perfect for God's kingdom. We invite you to connect with us for our weekly services. Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 10.30 a.m. Tuesday, in-person and Zoom prayer and Bible study, 7 p.m. Wednesday, Word Wisdom with Counselor Billy Washington, 8 p.m. The Prayer Wall, 6 a.m. Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. All in the Central Standard Time Zones. For more information, visit our websites. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us in one purpose. Today, you could have chosen any other place to log into, but you chose us, and we are glad about that. We would like to acknowledge any first-time visitors in the church on today. If you're here, you can wave your hand. Let us know this is your first time here. You were invited. All right, well, amen. We do have a couple first-time visitors. Keep your hand raised, as we will give you a gift for coming on today. On this side. And we would like to sing a song unto you. If you like to fist bump, if you like to air hug or air high five, that is fine. But we also like to embrace it around here. But whatever your preference is, we will acknowledge that. Amen. Amen. Let's have a welcome song at this time. Welcome to, welcome to church today. Church today. We're excited. We're excited to see you on today. So please accept our love. Please accept our love. As we share our heart. As we share our heart. We're ready. We are ready to show you who we are. Welcome to, welcome to church today. Church today. We're excited. We're excited to see you on today. Please accept. 
our love. I wish we share our heart. We are ready to show you we are. We're building. We're building. We're growing. We're growing. We're helping. We're helping. And spreading the Enhancing the, enhancing the kingdom of God. We're building, we're building. We're growing, we're growing. We're helping, we're helping. And spreading. Get excited about Jesus. Get excited about Jesus. And bless his name. And bless his name. Get excited about Jesus. And bless his name. And bless his name. Get excited about Jesus. Get excited about Jesus. And bless his name. 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 Welcome to, welcome to church today. Church today. 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 Amen. We trust in that you are feeling most welcome. Those of you that are online, whether you are on Facebook or on our website, let us know where it is that you are viewing from. If you have a prayer request, you can either post it on the thread or you can contact us, send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to connect with you. I'm here to give you your announcements on this morning. If you don't have a bulletin, you want to make sure that you do have one, for I will not be going over everything but highlighting what is happening right now. Children's Church does follow immediately following our offering our snack shop is open always after church it is very it, very inexpensive 25 cent to 50 cent in the fellowship hall we are in the midst of a 14 day of prayer and fasting this is day number seven hallelujah we already know that we meet uh, every night until the 20th the 20th next sunday will be our last the last night in which we will meet by way of phone at 7 p.m the number is in your bulletin we have also been asked to study the book of acts study the book of acts right along with us there is a prayer focus each and every day if you're not receiving it perhaps i don't have your phone number just me contact Connect with me after service, and I'll make sure you get that prayer focus. Prayer and Bible study this Tuesday. This Tuesday. Everybody say she's talking about this Tuesday. Hey, wake up. Pay attention. Pay attention. 7 p.m. It will be by way of Zoom. It will not be in person because we start our construction on tomorrow. So if you come here, Bishop going to say, you got some work clothes, he's going to put you to work. So if you want to come, you can come, but he's going to put you away. Amen. But make sure you connect with us by way of Zoom. If you need the information, it is, it is in the bulletin on the very first page. 
Friday, this Friday, we're flowering the community. You want to make sure you connect with Pastor Walker and Sister Walker. Wave your hand in case they don't know you. It is that time again, amen, which we're going to be giving out the groceries. They're going to be meeting at 645. It will be toward getting dark, so you want to make sure that you adhere to the instruction that he's had. We need as many that are able to come out. Why? Because this Saturday, we are going to be doing our grocery giveaway. This Saturday, 8 o'clock, wear your, wear your earmuffs, your gloves, your whatever it is, that your back brace, your arm brace, your leg brace, and, and, and prayer, and you will be all right. Isn't that right, Sister Walker? You'll be all right. And we're looking forward to being able to serve the community, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, third Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday, Elder Neal could not be here because she is moving, but next Sunday will be our very first this year afternoon service. So please put it on your calendar, 3 p.m., she will be in charge. Our ministers have an opportunity and a platform to be able to be trained and to plan their own service. So we hope you will join us. Our Sunday school books, I will be ordering them tomorrow. Tomorrow, Dr. Butler said tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. I'll be ordering. So if that you have not told me personally that you want your book, you need to let me know by today. If you have my number, you can text it to me. Finally, and the bishop will reiterate this, we are coming up on the deadline in which you to purchase a brick so that you can leave a legacy. That brick will be on the walkway and perhaps on our awnings. The information is in the bulletin. The deadline is December 3rd because they're starting construction on, tom on tomorrow. So thank God for these announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, and, and then also, I'm so sorry, Minister Matthew, pull up. Um, I got the okay today. It's really on my heart. This time I'm doubling my efforts. I want to help the, the, the unsheltered community with tents. If you want to be able to sew, it is 20. This is on my Facebook page. I'll put it on all of my social media platforms. They are $10 cheap this, this year. Amen. So if you want to get on board, I want to be able to give tents as well as partner with Fort Worth Five Loads, uh, and Three Fishes Ministry, we're going to be doing that by the 27th. They're giving out blankets, they're giving out foods, and I want to give out 100 tents. I put it, that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. If you're help, able to help, praise God. If you want to give, you can give uh, to Praise Center, or you can cash at me. Make sure you put tent, and I just believe without a doubt, we're going to be, it's, it's cold today, is it not? It's cold today, right? Our unsheltered friends need our help. Let's receive our bishop at this time. God bless everyone. Thank you for adhering to the announcements. Well, bless the Lord, everybody. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Jesus. Oh. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, you want some joy? Start praying. You want some joy? Start witnessing. You want some joy? Start seeking the counsel of God. And he'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. I don't know you. You guys got to catch up, but I've been, I've been praying all night, so amen. I'm ready to have church. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. You can have your seat at this time. Amen. We thank God for truly God is awesome. He is awesome. He is awesome. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nobody like God. Amen. And we thank God. We're excited. Amen. Tomorrow, amen, Pastor Kelly, amen, will be here, and we're going to start doing our renovation on our ADA compliances, and then we're going to start tackling the back. Everybody say the back. Amen. We're going to put up our fellowship hall. Amen. We're going to put up a fellowship hall, two tiny homes, and a storage unit. Amen. That's what we're going to be doing. Amen. We believe in God. We believe. Tell your neighbor, it's, it's faith time again. It's seed time again. It's time to sow, and it's time to sow in faith, and it's time to sow in giving. Why? Because we're getting ready to do some things. Amen. We got to have the facility for the kids and for, for the kitchen, and then we need to have, we need to start housing people. Amen. Amen. The church got to become the welfare system again to the people. And amen. And we've got to put some things in order. And so we've got to be, be in prayer with me. Believe with me. Stand with me. You know what to pray? Say, Lord, just give Bishop that land. Give him some more land. He need land and he need money. He need resources because he's going to build us some houses. Amen. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but rent is getting out of hand. And amen. That's why I always tell people, you soon as you can, stop the bleeding. Buy you a house. Stop the bleeding. Some, some of us, the reason why we can't get a house because we drive in our house. 
we driving those muscles, cars, them Charlies, and tell, but we don't have a house. You mean we buy a Mercedes, but we don't have a house. We got, we got $300 pair of tennis shoes and red bottom shoes and $1,200 weaves and $1,200 cell phones, and, but we don't have a house. That don't make sense to me. Amen, amen, amen. We flossing, but we ain't got nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we don't like to get real, but see, the reality is that when you look at the black community, the black community spent $3 billion last year on Jordans. We spent $6, million on al $6 billion on alcohol. Yeah. We buy twice as many Mercedes than, 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 than the white, than the Caucasians. And we can't even afford them. We, we putting our money in the wrong place. Amen. Your wealth comes and you can pass on generation wealth by, by you having property. Because it can go to your next generation that they don't have to start off trying to pay rent, trying to pay this. They can start from a place of debt free and they can... You got to make plans. Don't, don't just live it up for you, but you got some kids and some grandkids that's falling behind you. You got to make preparation. We die. We ain't got no insurance. I don't even know why I'm on this bin. We die. We don't have no insurance. So now we got to keep you above ground three months trying to raise some money to put you in the ground. We're not, we, we, we're not focused right. Amen. So we're going to get focused. Amen. We're going to, amen, I, I'm going to seek God if he won't be this. Amen. We're going to do our, do our, um, I'm probably, yeah, we're going to do it this year. But next year, we're going to do wealth. Amen. We're going to do a financial training. Amen. Courses in our Bible study. Amen. We're going to teach you some strategies and stuff to help you get somewhere. Amen. 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 Income tax is coming up, and you already planning on what you finna buy, that coach purse and that, that cell phone, you need to put that money in the bank. Amen. We just got our income tax last, a couple of weeks ago. Because we never filed until October. We filed the last day. We get an extension and we you know why? Because we're not looking for the income tax money. To run. We, so that money goes straight in the bank. Amen. Well, I'll help you. Amen. So you'll catch up with another day. Amen. Another time. Why? Because you've got to make preparations for yourself. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to get into this offering time. Amen. We're going to go to Malachi. I want to read this real fast. In the book of Malachi, he meant the third chapter. We know this passage backwards and forth, but I want you to see it for yourself so you don't think I'm making this up. In, the ver in, in Malachi, the third chapter, in verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord. And I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, it, this doesn't seem like this scripture fits with what comes afterward. Because he's going to start talking about tithes and offering. But the first thing that God tells him, he says, look, he says, I am the Lord and I don't change. He said, the reason why I haven't killed you, the word consume means to kill, to take a, why I haven't killed you is because you robbed me in tithes and offering. And it was my, that I was supposed to take you out from stealing from me. But because I made promise with Jacob and Abraham and Isaac, I don't change. Because I made promise, I don't change my mind. So my mercy is extended to you because you stole. But I should have punished you, but I didn't punish you. Uh, <laughs> See, a lot of times we just think scripture is there, huh? He then goes in verse 7 and says, I will, said, will a man rob God? You have robbed me, but ye... But you say, where have we, have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Amen. See, God said, look, the reason why, and I know people say, well, you know, we know we don't, you know, tithes is Old Testament and we ain't under the law. But you go to first tithe, you know what the first tithe was? The first tithe was in the garden. That God told, he told, he told Adam and Eve, everything in the garden you can eat of, but that one tree, that was the tithe. And when they ate of the tithe, they brung the curse. You know when the second, he meant, so God told them when they got into the land going, he meant, when they got in the land of the wilderness and when they finally got over into Canaan, he says the first city, when you get to Jacob, destroy everything. Don't take the silver, the gold, the cattle, nothing. And Achan stole and then they had a curse on them and they got whooped by a little city called Ai. You know why? Because they stole the tithe. God said, I'm going to give you all of Canaan, but that one near is mine. God always got to have his first. 
Oh, you better. I don't help you. So tithe, Abraham was our first recorded that gave tithe. Abraham gave tithe. Amen. When he gave tithe, he gave it before law. Abraham became before Moses. Moses was the one who got the law. Law was not in existence. You've got to understand dispensation. Dispensation is the time where God moved or where the time God had different programs going out to bring to restore men back to himself. And in grace, amen, what happened was that uh, we was in, Abraham was in promise. Law came after promise. So therefore, Abraham sold unto Melchizedek before law was established. Oh, God. So he said, well, you robbed me. See, a lot of us, we be driving, and when we leave here, we driving getaway cars. We done stole God's money. We done we driving getaway cars. Amen. We going to get it. We, amen. Rob, we stole to go on vacation, and I better move on. You ain't going to like me no more. Amen. But see, the thing is, God's word is God's word. And he said, you have robbed me, look, in tithes and offering. I know a lot of times we struggle with the tithe, but let me help you out. The tithe is the is not an offering. In Leviticus, he says, he says, the tenth is mine, said the Lord. So how can you pay something that you owe? That's already his. So the tithe is obedience. It is not an offering. That's obedient to the word. What's obedient is the offering, which you give out of the 90 that's left. That's 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 an offering that takes faith. That's obedience. I mean, that's not obedience. That's free will giving. So what the tide does, the tide is the preparation seed that causes all the other offerings to manifest. Oh, God, the tide open up the window. Look, if you read it, he says, he goes on and he tells him, look, he says, look what he says. He said, you're a curse with a curse. You robbed me. He said, rob me, even the whole nation, nobody's without excuse. He says, and you bring all your tithes into the storehouse that you may be, that there may be meat in my house and prove me now, me now, wherewith, said the Lord of hosts, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have not room enough to receive? Then he goes and says, I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now, see, we don't understand the word devourer here is the word. It means the seed eater. If you look at it, he said, I'm not going to let the, your, your fruit, your grapes come off the vine before it's time. In other words, I'm going to let your harvest go through. I'm not, have you ever, anybody ever had some fruit trees and you be watching that, them peaches or whatever kind of fruit. And then right when it gets ripe, you go out there to go pick it and the birds and start eating them all up. See, God said, I rebuke the seed eater. I'm not going to let him destroy your meat. I'm not going to let him destroy the vine. See, God will hold some things off of you. Your things will last longer. Your, your car will last longer. Your, your kids' clothes will last longer because God is rebuking the devourer for your sake. He keeps them off of you. So what the tide does, it opens the window, but it doesn't pour nothing out. Reason why I don't pour nothing out, because he said you robbed me with tithes and the Bible says in the scripture, if you give, it shall be given back unto you. Good measures. But that's not tithe. That's offering. But that offering will never come back to you if you got the window closed. So the tithe opens up the window. Oh, see, 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 the thing is, we lived off this principle. I remember when I was making, what was I making, $100 a week, and when I got paid tithes, he meant, when I paid tithes, I had $90, and I lived, and we went to church four or five times a week. We lived 26 miles away from the church. You know, that don't sound like very much here, but in California, I mean, that's an hour trip one way. And so, therefore, we burnt a lot of gas going back and forth. And we never did stop tithing. We never, and, and I was going full-time ministry. Tasha was in the womb. Amen. We had two new cars. And, and amen, we never did stop. You know why? Because God, amen, made a promise. From that, God blessed us with a house that we couldn't even, that, amen, that, that when we got the house, amen, it was below market. The lady said, well, you can put it in, but it ain't going to never go through. So we said, go ahead and put it down. That's what we qualify, get it, put it there. We laid hands on that house. We walked out. He met, I went by there one day. I said, they over there working on that house. She never called me. I said, hey, we, did we get the house? I see people, she called. Oh, yeah, you got the house. See, God made a way. He gave us, he remodeled the whole house for us for free. 
the low market. You know why? Because when you do what God tells you to do, God will bless you. See, the thing is, if you could take your faith to another level and believe God. See, when you give God, see, God has set up an economical plan for his people. And the economical plan, if you give, I will always let it remain seed time and harvest on the earth. That doesn't change. Hello, somebody. Amen. God will bless you. Tell your neighbor he'll bless you. See, God never promised to bless you with a Bentley. He never promised you to have a house on the hill. He said, I'll supply all your needs. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to put on. You ain't got to worry about a roof over your head. That's your needs. Uh-huh. Oh, God help us. And let me help you. The race is not given to the, nor the battle to the strong. Uh-uh, that ain't how it go. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that it goes farther than that. He says, bread ain't to the wise and neither the battle to the strong. But chance happened to them all. In other words, everybody in here got a chance to be rich, to be blessed. It rains on the just and the unjust the same. So having stuff don't mean that you're blessed. This means you had a chance and you was able to make it. Y'all, I'm going to leave y'all alone. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. See, we got to understand the word. Amen. When you understand the word and put it in practice, God will bless you. So you ain't going to be wishing and hoping for things that is out of reach. If, if, if it's going to happen, it'll happen. It ain't no luck. You ain't got to call. He met the nine, the psychic number and get your palm read. You ain't got to do all that. He may believe God's word. If you so and do what God tells you, God will bless you. He may, you say, well, I, I got good. That's great. But you can have more. See, because needs, needs is just not money. Sometimes it's your health. Sometimes it's your peace of mind. Sometimes it's a change in the family. Sometimes it's a victory over something, over a stronghold. See, God said, I supply the need. Oh, God, let's stand. We stand and we stand and we stand. Amen. Saints of God, I challenge you to amen, just obey the word of God. When you obey the word of God, amen, there's some things, amen, that is locked up in your obedience. And when you obey, God would loose some things into your life, amen, that's been held up. Amen. It's been held up because simply because I haven't obeyed in his word. Amen. We're coming at this time. We thank the Lord, amen, for, for offering this praise center. This is... Repair the breach in rows of Sharon. Amen. Father, as we come before you at this time, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we thank you for the tither. God, we pray, Lord, you would do as you said in your word. Rebuke the devourer for their sakes. And open up the window. And Lord, as they give the offering, that the offerings will begin to bring forth return in their life. That it would overflow, good measure, shaking together and running the flow. It's running over in their life that men shall give unto their bosom. Now, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Bless your people as they give in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, we'll be led by the urchers from the rear, and they will lead you, amen, to be able to give offering.
Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. For your giving. Amen. Hook up with God's economical plan and see if it don't work. Amen. We've been living by faith for, what, 37 years. Amen. And God has supplied needs and God has allowed us to do some things and bless us. Amen. And give us wisdom. You know, we don't go out and eat every week. We don't go out and, you know, some of these places, amen, we, we hear you talk about it. We don't go, but, amen, we hear you talk about it, amen, because we, we, we make conscious decisions to do certain things, amen, amen, amen. You can go on vacation every year if you plan for it, amen. It's just sacrifice. Anything that you get in life, you've got to be willing to make the sacrifice to get it. Let me help you out. Y'all know we all like our own spot, but if it means for me to partner with somebody for a season so that I can save to get myself in position to get in debt out and to get some money in the bank so I can buy, then make that sacrifice. If it means for me to even do extra overtime for a season to get myself in a position, then you make the sacrifice. If you want a better job, you go to school, take the sacrifice. Yeah, you can't run around, do everything everybody else do. But when you get that degree and you get that better job, make the sacrifice. If you want it, sacrifice for it. Amen? Amen. Well, I got to do this now so I can get out the way. ready for the word of God to come forth at this time. We thank the Lord for the speaker of the hour, no other than Counselor Washington. We thank the Lord for him, amen. And we pray that, amen, that you be attentive to hear what the Lord got to say, amen. We pray that, amen, he's going to minister a word unto us, bring life, bring clarity, amen, that the anointing of God will flow. Now at this time, let's receive Pastor Washington by the word of amen. 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 Watch how you treat people. We had a meeting with Bishop Butler about three years ago. He wanted to come and partner with us. Just like he just got through talking, he, he, he practices what he preached. And I said, yeah, you can come partner with us. Matter of fact, I preach two Sundays in a month. Pastor Walker preached two Sundays in a month. If you come partner with us, I'll give you one of my Sundays. And by the way, I preach on fifth Sundays. I'll give your wife the fifth Sunday. God's watching how I treat him. And it won't cost you anything. Little did I know that about three years later, he'd have his own building giving me an opportunity to preach and doesn't charge me anything. May God bless you. So God, we thank you today. The song said, you've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all taking all my sins away. God, have your way today. Do them like you did me the other Sunday. I walked into the sanctuary and I heard Mother Deb pray. Oh, God. You're no respecter of person. You'll use anybody that will say, yes, Lord. 
Mother Deb don't know. But she was calling on you. You were blessing me through her prayer. Now God, Bishop, has hungered. He's thirsted after righteousness. He's told us and directed us into fasting and prayer. So God, we want to see your hand move as never before. You said these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, God, here we are. Just like empty pitchers before a full fountain. Asking you to have your way. My soul is thirsty. And I need a refreshing. I told Bishop, Lord, thank you for guiding us. Thank you. Now, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'm going to let you go ahead and have your seat. Ask Minister Matthew, if he will, to just put uh, the scripture. Esther, the fourth chapter, get the verses that I gave you, if you don't mind, just put them up there. We'll, we'll get to them in a minute. Today's message is centered around the Jews who remained in Persia after receiving permission to return to their homeland. They had been carried away captive for 70 years, and God, through King Cyrus of Persia, gave them permission to go back home. But they decided after 70 years, we're just going to go ahead and stay here. Now, when I say they, many of the Jews did go back home. Matter of fact, the first group to go back home was Zerubbabel. He came back with about 50,000. About 80 years later, Ezra came back. And after that, years after that, Nehemiah came back and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. And during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, the Jews that stayed in Persia went through some changes. So today's message is centered around the Jews who remained in Persia after receiving permission to return to their homes. What happened to them was, at this time, a death sentence had been ordered against them, meaning they were to be executed only had a few months to live. So when we get ready to read the scripture today, the scripture is centered around the fact that the Jews have a death sentence pronounced on them, and they only have months to live before they are destroyed all through the empire of Persia. You all with me? Now, Mordecai, is one of the Jews that were living in Persia, and when he got the news, he had a breakdown. He sat in sackcloth and ashes, and he wept and wept bitterly. And the only thing he knew to do was call on somebody that had connections with the king. And the person that had connection with the king was a woman by the name of Esther. And this is what the book of Esther is about. I'm going to ask Brother Matthew to switch and put down the slide that deals with the danger of the scattered Jews, since I'm talking to that area. The book of Esther, the first five chapters, deals with the danger of the scattered Jews. They were in Persia, and they were in danger of their lives. Death sentence has been put out. So the first chapter, here's what happens in Esther. There's a queen by the name of Vesta. If the Commodores were singing this morning, they would say, she's a brick house. And the reason why I say that is because the king wanted her to display her beauty in front of all his friends. But she had too much dignity to let him exploit her like that. I'm not just eye candy. I'm your wife. I'm not going to do that. And so 
because she didn't do it, Vesta, the queen, was, what did that word say? Dethronement. That was the first chapter deals with the dethronement of Vesta. And you know, things happen that we can't explain sometimes. Just because you love somebody, just because you treat somebody right, that doesn't mean that they have to love you back. We, we looking at you cross-eyed and crazy, but only you and God know what happened in that relationship. And sometimes it's better to be dethroned. Some people will do better, and you, you, you ain't never heard a preacher say this before, but let me say it up publicly, and y'all just have to pray for me. Some folk, I know one couple in particular that was married over 50 years, they should have separated. Because for 50 years, he brought out the monster in her. And for 50 years, she brought out the monster in him. And God has called us to peace. So on paper, it looked good. But in God's eyes, he'd rather see you separated and respecting one another than in the house fighting like cats and dogs. Come on, that's a good time to say preach wash. Th th thank you. So in the first chapter, Vesta was dethroned because she wanted to hold on to her dignity. In the second chapter, Esther deals with the distinction of Esther. She was chosen. They put on a beauty queen contest. And all the virgins and the good-looking women were brought to the house of women so that the king could choose him another wife because he had dethroned the first one because she wouldn't drop it like it's hot in front of everybody. And so Esther took her place in the second chapter. In the third chapter, here's where the trouble starts. There's a decree of Haman. Haman was one of the king's right-hand men that he had promoted over all of the princes. He was over everybody. And therefore, since he was over everybody, when he would walk in public, when they'd see him, they'd bow before him because he was the king's highest authority under the king. But there was one man by the name of Mordecai that refused to bow before him, and because Mordecai didn't bow before him, he made a decree that everybody that's kin to Mordecai and the Jews, all of them be, uh, be killed, terminated, whatever the word would be. So the first chapter, the queen is dethroned. Second chapter, we got a new queen, Esther. Third chapter, Haman makes a decree. Fourth chapter deals with the distress of Mordecai because he knows that a death sentence, there's been a hit put out on his life. And this is where we're going to start reading uh, if we share the scripture. Uh, the fifth chapter deals with the disposition of the king. All right. Now, Brother Matthew, would you put that scripture back up there? I'm going to take my time and walk the text. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself. Don't get it twisted. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all these Jews. You see, the king is infatuated with her. He's fascinated with her, but he doesn't know that she's a Jew. And the king has given permission for all the Jews to be killed in a matter of months, but he's married to a Jew, and he doesn't know it. But now that the decree has went out, there's weeping all throughout the land of Persia. The Jews are weeping. You know, being saved does not necessarily mean you're not going to go through Hell. Peter was up, was crucified upside down. Paul had his head chopped off. There are things that can happen to you that make you wonder, Lord, you're supposed to be a God of love. If you love me, how can something like this happen to me? 
I better go give you your thought here because it looks like I'm going all kind of ways. Repeat after me. Trust him even when you can't trace him. Things ever happen to you, Big Brandon, that, 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 that make any sense? You know, Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Why am I going through the things I'm going through? Trust him when you can't trace him. All right, Brother Matthew, did you got any more scriptures for me? All right. Now, don't think you're going to get away more than us. And let me say one more thing to you. If thou altogether holdest thou peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. You see, God had strategically positioned her to be able to talk to the king, but she had a choice to hold her peace. And Malachi and, and Mordecai said, if you hold your peace, God yet is going to save Israel, but he's going to have to do it through some other vessel. The bishop said, you know, if you, if you don't mind, if you'd like, you can do donate and maybe buy a brick. Well, I gave him some brick money this morning. Now, I, I, I don't have to give him anything. But if I hold my peace and don't do what's right, God going to bless him anyway. And since I'm kind of smart, don't fool yourself. I figure since God going to bless him anyway, I may as well get in on the blessing. Because God told Abraham, I'm going to bless those that bless you. And I'm going to curse those that curse you. Because I blessed him three years ago and gave up one of my Sundays and told him he can come fellowship with us, won't charge him anything. Now he's giving me permission to preach. He, he could preach every Sunday. I don't know why I'm looking at you while I'm talking like that. But you reap what you sow. Esther, if you hold your peace, God going to bless us in a way. Our deliverance is going to come from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And here's where we're preaching from. The last sentence. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? If you don't mind, I know preachers get up and say, wave your hand and turn three times and all that good stuff. And I, I, I like it. But would you do this for me? Would you touch your neighbor and say, this is not a coincidence being at this church. Yeah, you see, my life is not a coincidence. My Heavenly Father treats me the way I treated Ray Ann. He said in the book of Matthew, if a natural man's son asks for bread, will the Father give him a stone? If he asked for a fish, will the father give him a serpent? He said, well, if you then, being evil, know how to give good things to those that ask, how much more would my heavenly father give good things to those that ask? So God wants to bless us all. All right. Thank you, my brother. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go ahead, brother Matthew. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, neither eat nor drink three days and nights, day or night, or night or day. Now, that sounds like a hard thing to do, to fast. Anybody ever fasted three days and three nights? I, 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 when I was younger, I, I'd fast three days and three nights, and that sounds like a hard thing to do, and I'm not going to play with you, with you. It is a hard thing to do unless you get into the right kind of trouble. If you get into the right kind of trouble, you'll pray three days, three nights without even trying to. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I've been in so much trouble that I prayed all night and I was trying to go to sleep. But, 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 but trouble will make you put your face in the very bosom of God. The very bosom of God. You know, trouble 
that does that to you. And, and, and let me let me say something real quick. Lord, don't let me lose my track. I think I think I'm doing pretty good. But let me say something about my my wife. God has blessed Brother Washington again. Oh yeah. Proverbs said, "Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies." And I can say more about it. But the woman has stuck by my side for about thirty-five years. Made, I almost sent a picture to Matthew 35 years ago. I started the Rose of Sherman Church, and I got a picture 35 years ago giving her the right hand of fellowship. There is a friend that stick it closer than any brother. All right, so let me move on. I just threw, I threw, I threw it in. All right, so he says, go gather all the Jews that are in the palace of Shushan and fast for me because I'm going before the king. He said, and if I perish, I perish. The reason why she said, if I perish, I perish, because there was a law. And the law says, if you ever step into the inner court of where the king resides, without him calling you, you just going to just show up, and he hadn't called you, there was a law that said you'd be put to death, except the king decided to hold out the golden scepter to you. And when Mordecai asked Esther to go intercede, she told Mordecai that you know about the law and the king hadn't called me. And this is why she went anyway and said, well, I, this, this might cost me my life, but if I perish, I'll just have to perish. All right. Not only is God a loving father, but he is strategically, he, he is strategic and watchful over every aspect of our lives. God had warned Israel through Moses first and through Joshua second and through the prophets of his willingness to dispossess the children of Israel if they worship any other God. In other words, Moses' last address is the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy means second law. So before Moses died at the age of 120, he retaught everybody out in the wilderness. And he gave them a warning to say, God's going to bless you all to possess the land. But if you get over there and you're serving other gods, he's going to depossess you. The reason why you're going to the land, Moses said, is because the land is vomiting. The inheritance of those of the land, the land is vomiting them. Y'all need to read your Bible. So the land was puking, and that's why all of those inhabitants had to get out because it was too much sin. Even the land got tired of them. But Moses said, but if you get over there and serve other gods, I'm going to depossess you. And the last thing Joshua said to them, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you don't serve the Lord when you get over here, God's going to depossess you. So the thought today is trust him even when you can't trace him. There have been times in my life that I've had dreams, visions. This is why uh, people look at me a little bit crazy because I'm not in mourning. I haven't been in mourning. I had, I don't want to watch, watch, watch your disposition, brother boy. But the Lord showed me that, that Mother Washington would be leaving at least 10 years ago when I was at your church, when I was at Praise Center. Minister Matthew is my witness. We've been talking about it for years. Every time she'd get real sick, he'd say, now, Mr. Washington, you told me she's going to be laying a certain way when she leaves. Is this it? No, that ain't it. She ain't laying the right way. And when she got to laying the right way under that condition, he's back there. He said, Mr. Washington, this is it? I said, this is it. She's laying just the way I saw her. And so God took her on in, but God said, live on. Bless God's great name. Israel needed to trust God, although they couldn't trace him. But what happened for them to lose the trail of God's benefit in their lives? Solomon was praying one day after God had blessed him to be the richest and the wisest man on the face of the earth. And in his prayer, he was saying, Lord, I know how people are. 
if the people quit serving you and start worshiping other gods and you carry us away captive, if we would turn to you, would you hear from heaven? And God visited Solomon by night. The, the second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 13, he says, now, here's the deal. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. So when Israel got in trouble, they sought God's face, they turned from their wicked ways, but there was no sign that God was going to intercede. You ever prayed and it seemed like the heavens were silent? You know, the devil would love to trick us into thinking that we can't trust God. But God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. Trust him in, even when you can't trace him. Well, Brother Matthew, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to bring this message to a close. Hit me with that scripture about all things. I want to leave you with a thought, and if you have this thought in, in your mind and in your heart, you won't suffer from depression. We're under attack by the spirit of depression. There's psychological warfare going on in the midst of our situation. And the one reason why I know it is because the psychological warfare has no respect to a person. That old spirit been attacking me. The spirit of oppression and heaviness attacked me so hard and so deliberate that I told my wife, I may have to call Bishop, not this time, but the last time I preached, I may have to call Bishop and tell him, I'm going to have to let you take the Sunday. Thank you for giving me a Sunday, but I'm going to have to let you take it. And you know what that wife of mine did? After I told her I may have to call Bishop and tell him that Bishop, thank you, but no thank you, that woman looked at me and said, the Bible said, in season and out of season. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is for her blood rubies. So she helped pray me through. But when God get through with me, I'm going to come through as pure gold. I passed the first test. The first test is believe it. The most important thing you'll ever do on the face of this earth is believe. Because the Bible said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So I've already passed test number one. I am a believer. Test number two is after you become a believer and you're saved. Test number two is to walk in love. Paul said in the 13th chapter of Corinthians, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, if I don't have love, I am nothing. Though I have the gift of prophecy, though I have all faith that I may remove mountains, though I give my body to be burned, though I give all my goods to feed the poor, if I don't have love, I am nothing. So I have passed the belief test, and I've passed the love test. And now the last thing I got to pass is the trust God test. Because there is a battle for my mind. The devil don't care anything about the fact that I have credentials and that y'all call me Dad Washington and y'all call me Counselor Washington and y'all call me Reverend Washington and Pastor Washington and Brother Washington. The devil don't care anything about that. He's after my mind. And I'm saying, Lord, I've been preaching for 46 years. What is this thing? 
that won't let my mind go. Lord, help me today. And it came to me. There are three things that I need to understand. And Solomon said in the, tw in the second chapter of Proverbs, beginning at verse 3 through verse 5, if thou criest after knowledge, and thou lifted up thy voice unto understanding, if thou seek for it as silver, and search for it as hidden treasure, then will thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. And God gave me a word. Word number one, all things are for your sake. So the next time something happens to me, I'm going to remember that it's for my sake. You see, all things that happen to you, Big Brandon, is not necessarily a blessing to you, but it's still for your sake. Because when something happens to you, it's not a blessing to you. It's meant to be a blessing through you. You see what I mean? That divorce was not a blessing to you, but it's a blessing through you because through your experience, somebody that's thinking about taking their lives can hear your testimony and find out weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. All because all things are for your sake. Number two, all things are of God. The devil can't touch you unless God give him permission. One day, there was a meeting in heaven. The sons of God got together and they were having holy communion. And the devil showed up. And the Lord said, from which cometh thou? The devil said, I'm coming from to and fro, seeking who I may devour. And God said, has thou considered my faithful servant Job? There's none like him, a man of prayer, a man of praise, a man of devotion, a man that loves his wife, a man that loves his children. But I heard the devil say, just let me get at him. I'll make him curse you to his face. And God said, you can have him, but just don't kill him. And in one day, all of Job's children died. In one day, all of Job's possessions were stolen. And the devil still wasn't happy. They had another meeting in heaven. And God said, Satan, you caused me to move my hand against Job. But he's still singing. He's still preaching. He's still praying. He's still abiding. He's still studying to show himself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Job said, wait a minute, in the second chapter and the fourth verse, Job said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Put forth thy hand, touch his bone, and touch his flesh, make him sick, he'll curse you to his face. The devil smote Job from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. But Job said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm gonna hold on until my change comes. I'm gonna hold on until I get filled again. I'm gonna hold on until I experience God's presence. Oh, bless his name. All things are for your sake. It may not be a blessing to you, but it's gonna be a blessing through you. 
And the way you're going to keep from going insane, the way you're going to keep from being depressed, just witness to somebody. Just lay hands on somebody. Just preach to somebody. And God will give you joy. Unspeakable joy. Get ready to close. But all things are for your sake. All things are of God. And last but not least, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Malachi said, lady, you need to go before the king because this just may be the invisible hand of God working in your life. And Esther said, I want y'all to pray for me. I want you to fast for me because I'm going to see the king. If my mother don't go, my father don't go, my sister don't go, my brother don't go, I'm going to see the king. I'm going where the joy is. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring, but take me to the king. I want to sing a song that the angels can't sing. I've been born. I've been redeemed. Just take me to the king. 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 All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to those that are, are the called according to his purpose. Four years ago, Four years ago, my wife took sick until my mother watches it now. Her blood pressure shot up in church. And my wife, my beautiful wife, Lady Jordan, as she had been doing the last 30 something years, came to my side. She said, Pastor Washington, do you want me to go home with her and you stay here? And I was so hurt, I didn't know what to say. And then she said, well, if you don't want me to stay here and you go home with her, maybe you can stay here and I go home with her. She's trying to help me. We finally made it to the house. And Minister Matthew hadn't been preaching long. He, he, he was still a youngster. And I told them, the burden is so heavy, I tell you what we need to do. We need to make Brandon the pastor of Rosa Sherman. And I, I need to talk to the bishop. I brought your name up in the meeting. But Lady Joyce Jordan Washington was at the meeting. And she did me like Deborah the prophetess did Barak. Deborah the prophetess went to Barak and said, had not God told you that you need to go to war? And Barak said, well, yeah. And he said, by the way, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go. She jumped up in the meeting and said, Pastor Washington, the Lord called you to preach. He told you to leave. And I looked over at her about four years ago. And I said, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go. 
trust him. Even when you can't trace him. So the God has a special plan, a strategic plan, a strategic blessing with your name on it. I'm looking at Big Brandon's daughter. And since I know that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, first of all, you know, you don't behave yourself unseemly, laying hands on sisters and stuff. Let some woman do that. But Big Brandon is my brother, and his daughter is my daughter. Just going to touch you. And when I touch you, I just want you to do one thing in your heart. Say, Lord, have your way. That's all. When I touch you, just say, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your spirit is upon me. Isaiah said, because you have anointed me to preach good tidings to the me. You sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Open up the prison walls of them that are bound. Now, Lord, just like you touched me a few Sundays ago, I'm asking that touch that you touched me with flow through my right hand into this young woman's body, into her mind, into her emotions, into her heart, into her flesh, into her future. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, daughter, just say, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we release our faith. We touch and agree. In the name of Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to thank you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you. That I love you more than anything. The doors of the church are open. Jesus said, Him that come unto me, I will in no wise turn him away. The doors of the church are open. And the Lord would say, come as you are. And trust him. Although in some instances, you cannot trace him. I don't know why God would give me the gift of healing. But I claim it right now. In the name of Jesus. The doors of the church are open. Would there be one? Would there be any? Job didn't understand why 